freezing motion in camera, this is how you do it. What's up guys, it's Evan Naka. I'm back inside the home studio, the garage. And today we're gonna do something that I feel like I've kind of been known for, and it's freezing that motion in camera. You've seen it in a lot of the different things that I've done, and I have to switch arms because my arms are getting really, really tired. You've seen the behind the scenes, you've seen those things where, you know, I'm throwing something in there, whether it's water, whether it's product, whether it's sauce, anything, but we get that crisp, frozen action in camera, not in post, and it's just, it's just awesome. It's just that look and you're just like, mmm, there's something about it, I like it, it's crispy, it's clean, it's just, yeah. I'm gonna walk you through exactly how I get that effect so that after this video, you can do it yourself on the next shoot that you have. And I'm also gonna have to put this on a tripod because there is no way that I can hold this this long. Mm, there we go, let me make that a little bit more even. Nope, that's not even. So before we even get started, I wanna walk you through all the equipment that we're gonna be using today. The star of today's show is gonna be the Sony a7R 4 As you know, I am a Sony shooter. I love it, everything that they've done with the colors, with the camera quality, everything is just awesome. And this Sony a7 IV has that massive megapixel information that it gives you. So it's just gonna be like the highest, cleanest quality that you can possibly get when you're working with photos like this and it makes it perfect for these clean, crisp, sharp images that we're gonna be freezing in camera. So that's what we're gonna be using as a camera body. The lens we're gonna be using today is a 16 to 35 G Master. G Master is probably my favorite brand of lenses. It's also one of the highest qualities that you can get for Sony. To me, it's just like, it's a no brainer. Lenses last a lot longer than camera bodies. This camera body, I mean, to give you an idea, when I started working with Sony cameras, that was probably maybe four years ago. And I've gone through maybe three or four different camera bodies but this lens was the first lens that I actually bought. So it's lasted me all through that. So that's why I invest in the lenses. That's why I make sure that the lens that I'm shooting on right now with the Sony a7S III is a 24 millimeter G Master as well. And then I try and stick with G Master whenever I'm working with Sony cameras, just because it's that high quality. You might as well invest in your glass because you're gonna be upgrading your bodies. So takeaway from today is invest in good lenses. Oh, one more thing. When it comes to the 1635, now some of you might be asking like, oh, Evan, you know, most product photography that I see, they like to shoot on a little bit longer telephoto lenses. So the product looks like what we actually see from the naked eye. So they wanna be shooting on like a 50 millimeter, maybe an 85 or using a 70 to 200. And I use those too and they're, they're great lenses. That's exactly what you want for commercial work or at least most commercial work and other just like really clean photos. But this is my style. I like a little bit of like this warped look for it, kind of that wider angle lens and we'll play with it. Whether we wanna go in 16, that might be too much. If we wanna to go to 35, but again, we'll play with it. This is my preference, but by no means does that mean you have to use a 16 to 35 or a wider lens like that. Feel free to use whatever you're most comfortable with or what you think your look is. And I have chosen the D2 by Profoto. It's 500 watts, it is a high speed sync strobe. This is kind of top of the line. I love Profoto. It's basically all the strobes that I use are Profoto. Um, and it really comes in handy and I'll show you why when it comes to this type of photography. Last but definitely not least is the backboards that we're gonna be using today. These are backdrops from V-Flat. They have a ton of different offerings. They have bounce boards, they have backdrops like this and all different styles and look like concrete or brick or tile. And it actually comes in really handy anytime you're in a pinch or in a small space and you're not able to get into like an actual kitchen to use you know, their tile. You can use one of these boards. They look super realistic on camera. These are basically a necessity if you shoot product or any type of style of product photography kind of want to have these on hand. Now, what are we going to be shooting today? You might be asking yourself, and I'm going to tell you right now, something you've seen in my other videos is, you know what? I'm just going to show you. We're going to be shooting Topo Chico. Now I thought Topo Chico would be perfect for this because we're going to be showing the splashing of water. We're going to kept try and catch those water droplets, which are some of the hardest things to catch in camera and freeze them to make them look crisp and clean and all those adjectives. So this is a great option to test this with and I would recommend using water or anything else like that just to really nail it down because if you can do it with water, you can probably do it with anything else. I'm going to start setting up the lights and as I'm setting them up, I'll go ahead and tell you what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. 
Since we are gonna be taking photos of a bottle, the way I usually like to light bottles is from the side. When you light it from the front, it gives it that glary look. You'll get that flash hot spot on it right in front of the logos and everything. And it doesn't look that clean. So lighting it from the side is always the best way to go, especially when it comes to like glass bottles or anything like that. So that's why I have this set up here and I'm gonna put a softbox on it. The softbox that I'm using right now is the one by three by pro photo. Now the vertical shape of it is perfect for shooting bottles because I've done another video on this on the past and maybe I'll throw it up right here. Are you trying to get into more studio photography but having trouble figuring out what kind of lights to use? This one's for you. Soft boxes are key, but the shape of them make a big difference. A rule of thumb that I like to use is I base the shape off of my soft box on what I'm shooting. If I'm shooting something tall and skinny, I usually like to use a rectangular one. If I'm shooting something a little bit more round, I like to use a round soft box. Same idea goes for the size of the subject. The bigger the subject, biggest soft box. Now because I've done this before, I know that even with this soft box and this layer of diffusion on it, it's still gonna cause a little bit of a glare on the bottle. And I'm gonna minimize that at least a little bit more. And by doing that, I'm gonna throw up another layer of diffusion and aim this at a little bit of an angle to fill in where it's gonna hit the product. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second. So we still have the pro photo aimed in the general direction of where we want it to be shooting but it's more of at an angle. You can see that the product is gonna be sitting back there, but we have it at a little bit of an angle, kind of like 45 degrees going forward with this layer of diffusion. Now, why did I do that? This layer of diffusion right here is gonna act as another way to direct light. So instead of the light all spilling out this way, this is gonna catch it and have it spill more onto our product. But what I'm worried about is having all this light right here, it's gonna go into the ether of space, and we don't want that. We wanna make sure that we have enough light that's still gonna light our product, because when we're freezing things in camera, we're gonna need a good amount of it to make sure that we're capturing it. So let's throw something up that helps it direct that way. Now we have our kind of initial, final setup, and we'll probably still make some tweaks around it, but we've created this essentially like a cocoon of light that's gonna be thrown onto the product by putting that V-flat board there, having the light getting shot off that way, putting the diffuser, it's guiding that light towards the product, but it's gonna be really, really soft. I think I'm gonna use the green bottle. If you haven't tried this flavor, it's awesome. Now here's something you're probably asking yourself is, well, if we're gonna be splashing water around, isn't that gonna hurt the camera? It's gonna get the camera wet, could potentially damage it. And you are absolutely correct, but I have a solve for that. Plexiglass. Plexiglass always comes in handy. It's like one of those things that you just need to have around, especially if you're gonna try and do this type of photography. It's always just good to have like a fresh, clean piece of plexiglass, just in case. So obviously we only have light coming from one direction and we wanna go ahead and make sure we have a balance on the other side to make sure that comes through. If it's not strong enough, we'll probably have to bring another light. I think at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and take a photo and see where we're at. We are far underexposed, so we're gonna have to crank up that energy. Okay, so I'm liking where we're at. I'll go ahead and throw you the image up right now that I feel like is good for what we're doing right now. I'm gonna grab a chair. So the reason I was saying that it comes in handy when you have a pro photo or a high quality strobe is because they have something called a freeze mode or a high speed sync mode. That's what these D2s offer. Now, I am not cranking up my shutter speed to match the high speed sync. I've done it in the past where I've matched it and I can go up to like 3,000, 4,000 frames per second and I try and freeze it in camera. Something that I actually found that works better is if you have all your ambient light cut out. So I'm talking, it is almost pitch black and I'll show you from this photo that I took without any of the strobes connected or anything like that. That is just what I would have if I didn't have strobes going off. It is just almost a black photo. Now the only source of light is coming from the pro photo. Now I have it in something called freeze mode that allows it to be a really, really quick, just burst of light. I'm not a technical shooter. I've preached about that in the past. So I'm not gonna go into all like the charts and graphs of what that actually means. It's all about that flash duration. And when you have it in that freeze mode, that duration is a lot shorter, which makes it almost like your shutter speed is even higher. It's like twice as much. This is by no means accurate numbers and it's not really related to shutter speed in any way, but think of it like this. If you're trying to 
If you're trying to freeze something at 2000 frames per second, that's really fast. Now, if you're doing it in this way where the shutter speed is a little lower, ambient light is gone, your flash duration is really, really, really short, it makes it like a 6,000 shutter speed or 8,000 shutter speed. So just to put it in perspective, like how much quicker and faster that light is just gonna pull, like I might even close the garage so that we get rid of any type of ambient light and that'll give us such a clean, crisp image. So let's go ahead and shoot it and see what we get. So I got actually some really cool photos. Here they are. And it's just, it's doing exactly what I was talking about. Now I got a little crazy with my splash because it got on the plexiglass and made it kind of like hard to tell what was happening, but the concept is there. So I'm gonna clean it up again. I'm gonna do it one more time. I'm try, gonna try and not get it on the plexiglass, but I think this looks exactly what we were trying to achieve here. Um, so let's try it one more time. All right, and there you have it. That's how we freeze images in camera. We stop that motion. It makes it feel clean and crisp and everything that I've been saying this whole time. Um, I hope this tutorial helped you. It's definitely something that is taking me a long time to really be able to control and master, and I'm still learning things day by day, but this is definitely gonna help you elevate your photography game, especially when it comes to product, but this same concept can also be used for lifestyle imagery with people maybe doing dance moves or jumps or flips or anything like that. Thank you for hanging out with me today. I'm Evan Naka, and I'll see you guys all next time. Cheers. Everything is so wet.